Pestis will be introducing our senior speaker. We have full. Huh? Oh, here you go. Put that on. Let's clip it on somewhere. All right. Technical difficulties. Surprise, Tapas is here. I mean, come on now, a third senior speech has got to be some sort of record. You know, it's all fun and jokes, even when your own sister mistakes you for Tapas at orientation. <laughs> yep, still holding that against you. But that brings me here uh, to who I am supposed to talk about today. No, I'm not here to talk about your student body co-president, diversity council co-president, recent Mamma Mia star, National Honor Society member, homecoming queen, or incoming Duke freshman. I'm here today to talk about the girl who still doesn't know her lefts and rights. Yes, you heard that right. <laughs> left, left. <laughs> now to you all, she may be the things I just listed, but in my eyes, she's still my big sister. In my eyes, she's the same Lexi that used to cry whenever she didn't get the seat she liked at our local Waffle House. She's the same Lexi who was our dance choreographer whenever we decided to give our parents a middle of the night Gunther and Tinka dance performance. She's still the same Lexi who copes with stress by blasting Olivia Rodrigo in her car at full volume. She's still the same Lexi who used to drive me to school late every single day. And she's still the same Lexi that has been my best friend and partner in crime since day one. She is the Lexi who has shaped me into the honorable young man I am today. My parents have told me before that Lexi's first words to me after I was born were, I love you, Hannah, but I'm thoroughly convinced that they were, don't test me, I get the room upstairs, you get the one next to mom and dad's room. <laughs> She's always been an adamant negotiator. But every set of siblings has their own form of competition, right? For us, we've been competitive in just about everything. Games of Uno, races to the front seat of the car, academic awards, dance battles, and even most recently, the AP Stats exam. I've never studied so hard for an exam in my entire life. Uh, all in all, our competitiveness has pushed us both to become better versions of ourselves. Lexi, I joke that you've had an amazing senior year that I will never be able to top, but you've worked very hard for all of your accomplishments. You are not only a hardworking student, but you are also an amazing friend and companion. You're a caring person who always supports her friends and you don't worry about consequences when taking a stand for what is right. It sounds cliche, but I encourage everyone listening to never take for granted the time you have with someone because in the blink of an eye, you may go from dancing in the playroom downstairs as kids to introducing them at their senior dinner. Lexi, you're the best big sister I could have ever hoped for. As Marilyn Monroe once said, sisters make the best friends in the world. Now presenting my best friend and your class of 2022 senior speaker, Miss Lexi Justice. Go Devils! Oh. thing I wore waterproof mascara thank you Hunter oh <laughs> to the class of 2022 friends families and faculty I want to first say that I'm beyond honored to be elected to speaker tonight by my classmates of the hundreds of assignments I have completed at Davidson Day this was by far the most challenging one in close competition with the BC jungle problem set and the infamous Tarzan physics problem that did indeed make me cry how am I possibly supposed to summarize my 14 years at Davidson Day basically my whole life, into just a few words in a few minutes. I want to start at the beginning. When I was three years old, my dad and my mom walked me into my first day of school as an eaglet. I wrapped my tiny hand around my dad's pointer finger and cried as I was terrified of being left alone in the large brick building that was so foreign to me. If you told me then that I would be crying on my last day in that same brick building as a senior, I would have thought you were crazy. If you told me then that I would end up spending a total of 2,520 days 151,200 minutes and 9,072,000 seconds in that same building, I would have thought you were crazy. And if you told me then that I would still be friends with some of those kids from that first day, I definitely would have thought you were crazy. Shout out the lifers. 
Every year since then, I have known exactly what to expect. Change to me has been minimal. The biggest changes in my life being from hallway to hallway. The first big change was from early childhood to lower school. The first challenge I faced as a lower school student was dealing with the school uniform, which was plain and boring. I did, however, find a way around it. You would see me and my friends, which did include the fashion icon, Delaney Brown, wearing big bows on our heads, neon leggings under our skirts, and water bottles strapped around us like a purse. Through the show choir with Miss Grizz, I was able to step out of my comfort zone and take the stage in many plays, which included Annie, where I played my illustrious role as Lily St. Regis. The next big change was from lower school to middle school, and this time I wasn't moving across the building but up a floor. With middle school came lockers, and most importantly, red polo shirts, which was a game changer for the whole boring school uniform challenge. Like I'm sure most people experience in middle school, my self-confidence diminished. That loud, sassy girl that I was in lower school was now quiet and became much more of a follower than a leader. I tried everything I could in middle school, including battle of the books and sports. Joining the Bob team led me to my discovery of Schmoop, a true game changer, and led me to realize that reading wasn't really my thing. With sports, particularly basketball, I learned that I wasn't the most athletic and coordinated kid out there, and that was okay. Dribbling the wrong direction publicly was probably the final straw for me on that one. <laughs> Um, the biggest le lesson I learned from middle school was that I didn't have to be like everyone else and participate in the activities other people were doing. I spent so much time trying to conform to be like the cooler girls, to wear Abercrombie and Fitch and white Converse, to be a cheerleader and follow them around. But there is so much value in being independent and having personal opinions and values and knowing how to express them. At the end of eighth grade, as I prepared myself for the last big change from middle school to high school, I questioned staying. I knew that I needed a change in order to be the best version of myself. I thought that the change I was looking for would come from moving schools, but Davidson Day was not the problem. It was my mindset. I let fear overdrive my every decision. I was scared to speak up in class. I was scared to embrace my differences. I was scared of being alone. And honestly, I was scared of really living and taking risks. Freshman year, I walked around in my gray New Balances with my head down, only doing what was required of me and not putting myself out there. I somehow became close friends with this really outgoing new girl named Sloane Fjord. <laughs> she was way cooler than me at the time, however, we bonded over our love for Cardi B and dancing. Sloane really helped me come out of my shell and realize that there was no reason to be shy. Sophomore year, my best friend Sully, the girl who I spent every lasting second with, decided to move countries, leaving me alone. <laughs> this was a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to become a lot closer with many of the other people in my grade. I was able to shy away from what was comfortable and put myself out there and make other best friends. I found that the only thing keeping me from building relationships with people was myself. One day during junior year, Mr. McGill, to no surprise, changed my life. He found me in the hallway and told me that he thought I would make a great leader in the diversity council and that I should consider joining. I thought he had to be joking. Me, a leader? I was going to shy away, but Mr. McGill kept pushing me to join. Finally, I did. I started off by listening to the forums and writing articles on them, and I found myself so inspired by those sharing their personal experiences that I knew I needed to do the same. The first time I spoke in front of a virtual audience on the Mixed Race Forum was one of the scariest experiences of my life. I pushed past the fear of judgment, and since that very moment, I felt empowered that I can say anything I want to say, and that if I set my mind to it, I can change the world. Fast forward a few months, and I would be leading the council as co-president with one of my closest friends, Cameron Baker, as we together help change our other students' lives in realizing that it's okay to be different and providing them with a supportive and welcoming community. With the momentum from the Diversity Council, I was able to discover that I was built to be a leader. Kate Fleming and I, <laughs> during one of our many Starbucks runs, also known as Code Green, decided to run for SGA. We were definitely the underdogs in that we both didn't have much previous experience with the student government. However, with our FIRE campaign video and our pink blazers, we were able to win the election and together lead our student body in finding our spirit after COVID basically demolished it. Vote late. In the end, I have no regrets. The lesson I learned from high school was invaluable, to live life and to not be scared and to chase your dreams. Rather than the shy girl with new balances, by the time I got to senior year, I was the personable, outgoing leader with cool high tops on. High school was my own personal growth journey, which I knew many of us went through. I made mistakes, I failed, but I learned. I hope today everyone feels like a better version of themselves than they were as freshmen. My 14 years at Davidson Day have enabled me to challenge the definition of a home. I define the term home as a place where one feels secure and comfortable, the way Davidson Day has always made me feel. The thought of not having Davidson Day in my life is saddening, but also exciting. Nothing could have prepared me more to face my future than my time here. 
I could not be where I, where I am today here if it wasn't for my family, my friends, and the Davidson Day community. I want to first thank Ms. Taylor. <laughs> Ms. Taylor, if I had to pick my favorite room in the whole hallway, it would definitely be yours, even though it doesn't have any windows. The energy in that room is like no other. You are the glue of the high school and ready to do anything for any of the students. I hope there's a Ms. Taylor's office full of snacks and warm energy at Duke. I also want to thank Coach Thomas for my four years on the golf team. While I was never the most talented player, you still enabled me to be positive and helped me grow as a golfer and a person. Nothing will ever be as shocking as me qualifying for states, but at least I put up a good fight and didn't lose. To the Mamma Mia cast, Freethine, Grizz, and Miss G, there was not a better way to finish off the year than dancing on stage in flippers in a wetsuit. This experience was extremely time consuming, but I would never take it back. Many of you here have had the curse of taking a Miss Khadija class, but I and a few others have had to take her class for three years. Those classes have definitely been the hardest classes I've ever taken, but they've been the most valuable. Ms. Khadija, you have taught me that I will get what I work for, teaching me the value of perseverance and academic challenge. You are tough as nails, but you inspired me to be just as tough. I also would like to publicly forgive you for kicking me out of class sophomore year and making me cry, even though both Hannah and I were talking, and we were talking about Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, to Simpson, you have been my biggest supporter. Nobody believed in me more than you did. No matter how many excuses I tried to give you, you never gave up on me or let me give up on myself. I know really deep down, like way down in there, you're going to miss our D-Block Econ class. And if one day, Carter and Yusuf do decide to make a podcast, I know you will be the first listener. I can't wait to come back and meet little Ellie Simpsonette in a few years and see what an amazing young woman you raised. To Steve, <laughs> the day I asked you what Kanye album was your favorite and you said the college dropout, I knew you were a cool guy. <laughs> I hope you continue to send me more 90s rap and keep up your Tupac references, even though most people won't get them. You have changed my life immensely, and I know I'm not alone in that. You are so much more than a teacher, and I will miss you, and your occasional barking and growling <laughs> very much. To Mr. McDonald, Ms. Cope, Ms. Brown, and Mr. Blake, thank you guys for being more than my teachers, but my friends. I could not have gotten through my rigorous course schedule without the laughs that you guys brought with it and your constant care for my mental health. I next want to shout out all of my friends. I will miss it in the lab on the weekends and walking in the freezing cold down Bethel Wood. There is not a day at school or out of school that I am not laughing with you guys. I will miss passing around Noodle, our trips to Charlotte, our bonfires, Sunday mornings at the Egg, and our Foursquare and World Cup games. My advice to all of you is to always be yourself and to not grow up too much. And I would also advise that in the future, try and refrain from eating worms and or wood chips for any price under $100. And definitely don't try to steal any of your professor's clocks. <laughs> um, so to my family, Sully, the Pumba to my Timon, the Tanya to my Pepper, the Michelle to my Bobby, you're the best thing that has ever happened to me. I can't begin to describe how much I love you and how much I appreciate you. You introduced me to a new culture with Telefunke, Pande Yuka, and of course, parties that start at 10 p.m. and go until 6 a.m. You've also shown me that family is more than just blood, it's about who is there when you really need them. Even though I hate the cold, you know I'll be up in Boston all the time. To quote one of my favorite movies, After, whatever our souls are made of, hers and I's are the same. Sully, you are my soul sister. <laughs> to my dad, Dr. Izzy, also known as Drizzy, <laughs> I want to thank you for inspiring your determination in me and always pushing me to reach my potential. You never let me settle for anything less than my best, and now I thank you for that. I would not have reached my goal to attend Duke if it wasn't for you. You paved your own path from nothing in Zambia to the life we live now, and I will forever be grateful for that. Also, thank you for my amazing tan. <laughs> uh, three degrees, six books, five full Ironmans, there isn't much you can't do, except beat Hunter at golf. <laughs> to my mom, Steph, occasionally Monique, thank you for being my rock. You are my inspiration. You have shown me all a strong, smart, independent woman can be. You have never let a single person in your life stop you from accomplishing your goals, even if it was easy to step aside and give up. I do not know anyone nearly as caring and loving as you. I will never understand why you support the majority of my crazy ideas, especially that wild show we saw in London. I will miss you very much next year, and I will cr try to keep my room clean just for you. To my little brother, who's not so little anymore, Hunter, thank you for being my absolute best friend since 2006. You have always have and always will have my back, and I will always have yours. I can't think of anyone else who would perform my horribly choreographed dance routines with me in numerous talent shows. 
You are such a hard worker and your future is bright. I will miss going to the Hornets games together and chasing Kelly Oubre. I love you and I can't wait for you to come visit so we can play the Duke golf course together. It will always be me and you versus the world. I want to remind everyone to practice gratitude and expression. Tell the people you appreciate that you appreciate them. Tell the people you love that you love them. I hope you all live every day with no regrets. Don't be scared and don't care about what other people think. Your life is your life and you can live it how you choose to live it. Every day is a new day to impact other people's lives, be kind, and better ourselves. It is not worth your time wasting energy on things and people who do not make you happy or give you what you deserve. I want to inspire everyone to take risks and chances and live, the way, live, the, live your life the way you want to live your life. To conclude, I want to emphasize that here today, we are two days away from the real start of our lives. This moment, our high school graduation, is something we will only experience once. This is the day that has been well anticipated, moving closer and closer as we have grown up. It's more than just receiving a piece of paper. It's the end of the linear chapter of our lives that has been high school. After we throw our caps up into the air, the possibilities for our futures are endless. No more you have to take a history class for the credit or you have to play a sport. Our lives are up to us, so take charge. Thank you.